Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon, and today we're going to keep things a little bit casual. Uh, I went to the old book barn today and managed to uh, pick up a few old school comic books. Uh, the first of which I picked up is Cops. The Central Organization of Police Specialists. Uh, this is from February of 1989. It's issue number nine. The Deadly Revenge of Rock Crusher. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Cops was an animated series on Saturday morning television back in the uh, late 80s. <clears throat> um... I believe it lasted until around 1990. Uh, only like a season or two. It was pretty popular though. Um, one of my favorite shows, my favorite character of the uh, cops was Longarm. Uh, so that was the first comic I'm, I was pleasantly surprised to get. And as you can tell, they're not in that great of condition. Uh, the old book barn, <clears throat> they sell used books used comics, used magazines, stuff like that. So it's not in that great a condition, but I managed to get 11 comics for 8 bucks, which isn't bad. Uh, they had a deal, uh, 10 comics for $7. I ended up getting 11, so. Uh, the next comic I picked up was Onslaught Epilogue, The Path to Redemption. Uh, Marvel Comics X-Men Special Event. As you can see, there's Professor Xavier on the front. Uh, and then kind of transparent with his uh, Onslaught armor. Very nice. I do eventually want to get the entire Onslaught collection. I actually had the first mention of Onslaught at one time. Uh, when Juggernaut got punched so hard... He went crashing into the street. Nobody knew who it was until about the end of the issue when he said Onslaught. So, next we have <clears throat> DC Comics The Phantom, number three from May of 1989. I already had issues one and two. I was very pleased to find issue number three uh, in the uh, comic book. Uh, section uh it's the phantom versus pirates eventually i will do a review on it uh, i hope it sticks to the style that i've come uh fond of in the first two issues whereas looked more uh solid colors rather than uh you know tons of fading and uh using multiple colors or whatever uh, this in the first two issues DC really did it right where they made it appear to be like a black and white newspaper strip how they did the artwork and then they went in and did the color over top of it um, so the colors are more bo are bolder uh, the next comic I got Nomad number three, X Bucky versus X Captain America. I had this comic at one point in time, <clears throat> but uh, it was in with a bunch of comics that uh, went away. Let's just say, and I was very pleased to find this. It's not in that great a condition, not in as great a condition as my copy was back in the day, but still very nice. As you can see, this is Nomad. This is the second Bucky facing off against the... Uh, technically, it would be the third Captain America because Steve Rogers actually was not the first Captain America. A little bit tidbit. Uh, the first Captain America was actually an African American. Um, but we'll get into that later. Uh, this is U.S. Agent now. So, very nice issue. Then we've got X-Force number 8. 
Um, <clears throat> as you can see here, I believe that's Grizzly in the background. We've got Domino, Cable. Um, I can't remember his name. Uh, it was two initials and a last name, I, but I can't remember it. And then we got Kane, another uh, Weapon X Project uh, initiate. And I have not read these yet. Like I said, I just bought them today. So then we've got X Factor number 75. Uh, again, this is one that I used to have a long time ago. Uh, Mr. Sinister and the Nasty Boys. Um, I can't. I, I'm not sure if this is when Mr. Sinister was introduced or not. Um, I, I've been out of the X books for a very long time, and I can't remember which issue um, Mr. Sinister was introduced in. Uh, <clears throat> but I want to say this might have been the first time he appeared uh, against the second incarnation of X Factor. Then we have still in its poly bag. Uh, Executioner Song Part 8, X Force number 17. Uh, I've been wanting to collect, uh, complete the Executioner Song set for quite a while. And as you can see, it's an unopened poly bag. Uh, official Marvel trading card featuring Strife's Strike File. Uh, Beyond Video, the new D Dragon Quest game. Uh, and then here's a list of the comics included in a Executioner Song. You got Uncanny X-Men number 294, X-Factor number 84, X-Men number 14, X-Force number 16, Uncanny X-Men 295, X-Factor number 85, X-Men 50, or I mean 15, X-Force 17, Uncanny X-Men number 296, X Factor number 86, X Men number 16, and X Force number 18. <clears throat> uh, coming up next, we've got X Force Deluxe issue, July. Uh, I'm not sure what year. Let's. Uh, 44 from July of 1995 pretty nice then we've got X-Force number 39 it seems to me that uh, both Marvel and DC have a habit of doing this they pretty much take the same cover and just design it slightly different Anytime a character dies or is injured, uh, there's always somebody holding another person. Uh, I don't know why they do that, but oh well. Then we've got X Factor, the Shaman, and the Maker. As you can see, there's Forge on the front. Uh, this is from April. It looks like 95. No, 96. 96. Uh, the cover was designed in 95, though. And last but not least, we have from the Impact era of comics, The Crusaders, number 5. Will their first mission be their last? Uh, for those of you who don't know, The Crusaders was created back during the Archie comic days. It consists of shield, the shield, uh, the fly... Black Mask, and uh, a few others. I believe U.S. Flag is in there as well. It was basically Archie Comics' version of the Avengers and the Justice League. But there you have it, guys. There's my comic book haul for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to try and do one of these uh, each week for a while uh, since the old book barn has... Uh, normally their comics are a dollar a piece, or like I said, you can get ten for seven bucks. So uh, I may see about doing one uh, these once a week. 
depending on how many or how often they get comics in. But as I said, I'm Shannon for Comic TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, my friends.